Welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing a year in review. Now, I first created this portfolio where I started investing in individual stocks and shares in about 2020 April, just after the pandemic crash. That said, I've been investing in the markets for about three or four years now, as I was exposed to the markets via some broad-based index funds that I used to hold with Santander. That said, I thought I, it would be a good time to look over the last year, what mistakes I've made, and really my performance in review, and what I think is going to happen in 2023. So if you're interested in that, please drop one of these to help new viewers identify which of these videos is good so drop a like if possible now how have the markets performed in the last year not particularly great when we look at the current economic concerns and situations we can see that the interest rates across the world have been increasing and pretty fast at that rate we've got the likes of the united kingdom on about a 3.5 percent interest rate whereas it was three percent just in december 22 we've also got america or the united states at 4.5 percent down uh, or up from four so we're increasing interest rates here by about 50 50 basis points, which is a large move. You've also got the likes of Argentina really smashing it with an interest rate of uh, 75%. Fair enough. Anyway, but when we realize why interest rates are being increased here, we can see it's because of high inflation. High inflation is rife in 2022. We've had some supply chain disruption, and we've also had a lot of that uh, impact from after the pandemic, which has meant that inflation is now soaring. In order to combat inflation, they've risen interest rates in hopes, in hopes that we can cap consumer spending and therefore pull inflation down. The target is from the central banks is that we're going to get a soft landing. So the outlook is hopefully we can get a soft landing, but the markets are like, yeah, I don't think that's possible negativity 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 shares have subsequently been dropping but they're not really as far down as where as they would have been two years ago so we've still seen quite a boost from the pandemic but a lot of the companies that were seen as very promising have obviously fallen into line now when we look at the inflation right we look at the likes of uh, again uh, the united states are on about 7.1 percent which is quite high don't forget we've got the united kingdom on about 10.7 percent you've got the euro area about 10.1 percent and argentina is smashing again at 92.4 percent it's a good thing they've recently won the world cup in 2022 because at least that will hold its value unlike their currency a lot of the current economic situation is obviously quite dire it's a lot of a negative outlook people are pricing in a bad year next year but ultimately no one knows what's going to happen in the future and that's the beauty of it we've got a lot of fears we've got the likes of crypto going from amazing heights to then just busting in this year it's still around bitcoin sitting around what 10k coin 14k coin something like that we've recently got the likes of sbf being caught for fraud based on his firm ftx and how they had a massive orgy between 10 people i'm not even allowed to say that i don't even know but it is a weird situation indeed Let's look at the global stock market indexes. So we can see here in the last year, the Dow is down about 9%. We've got the NASDAQ down 33%. The S&P 500 down about 19%. Astonishingly, the FTSE 100 is actually up by about 1%, and it's mainly because it's such a defensive um, investment, really, that none of it's going anywhere in particular. They've got high cash flows, they can combat inflation, they can raise prices with strong brand power. However, if you go back 30 years, the FTSE 100 has barely moved overall, whereas yet all of the other indexes I've mentioned have vastly outperformed it. So what mistakes have I made in my investment strategy in the year of 2022? Well, the biggest over looming mistake here was the improper risk management what do i mean by that well recently i've been riding my motorcycle right you get on that motorcycle that is a risk you already are aware of that if you come off you're not as safe as someone with a seatbelt in a car and crumple zones right you're aware of that risk now when i jumped into investing i decided that i was just going to get on a motorcycle and i wasn't going to wear any protective gear meaning that I wasn't truly aware of the overall risk. And in this way, I'm talking about the fact that I've got a really high exposure to two stocks only. These two stocks, whilst I believe are good investments, don't protect me from ignorance. And if I'm making a mistake somewhere in my investment strategy, I've not prepared myself for that systematic risk. This means by holding two stocks, and I've pretty much only held two stocks over the last year, that I've been ridiculously exposed to high levels of uh, high levels of risk that could have been easily mitigated by adding a couple more stocks. If I had added a few more stocks, a handful, five or 10, I would have therefore diversified myself and put myself in a very strong place. By doing this, I'm therefore easily capable of mitigating periods of high volatility, especially on companies that are having bad times. The likes of Boohoo in my portfolio has declined significantly over the last year. But if I'd have looked at that and gone, okay, actually, I've bought nine other companies here. We've got Diageo, we've got Dunelm, we've got other companies that are holding their value a little bit better. Boohoo would be that really poor loser in the corner, right? But at least some of the other stocks are doing all right or in line with the markets, which would be a promising sign to see. Again, I could go further than that. I could invest in index funds. And I'm not quite ready to do that because when I created 
this channel, I believed that I can outperform the markets, which is a very hard feat to achieve indeed. Now, well, so far I've done absolutely nothing to achieve that. And we'll be looking at my performance later and you'll see, okay, yeah, I'm really far off the mark here, but I'm still hopeful. I still believe it's absolutely possible. It just means that I've taken the first few years to really understand what it takes. And I'm not gonna give up here. Why would I implement three years of my life more now into investing and then just give up to say I need an index fund? Or perhaps that would be the wisest thing to do and focus my energy elsewhere. Who knows? But that's the point of this video today is about looking back in hindsight and going, what have I done? What can I change? And what will I do going forward? And then myself, I'll look back on this hopefully in five, 10 years and go, actually, he's a fool for doing that. He's a fool for doing that. My investment strategy is this now. And maybe in 10 years time further from that one, I'll say the same thing about myself. Who knows? Who knows? We'll find out anyway. We've also got buying without regard to valuation. This is something that I was very guilty of with Boohoo. Boohoo, I bought a very high multiple when I first bought it in 2020. And I think I bought something like a 40 or 50 times price to earnings ratio. That is ridiculously high. And I didn't really understand the concept of that. Obviously, it was in a quantitative easing period where money was disregarded, money was being handed out, stimulus checks, invest everything you can, it's all going up. It can't possibly go down then don't worry about it okay that makes sense right with stocks always going up you're not really going to be regarding the valuation as much and at one point i didn't even look at it at all i looked at it and went okay yeah well they got a p 50 but it's not 60 fine what I've come to learn now is that whilst price to earnings ratios can be quite high, I don't think they're a metric that you should be ultimately using to decide your investment strategy. I like to look at free cash flow ratios instead. I like to look at, okay, what has been the growth of the free cash flow of the company over the last year? Okay, let's complicate that a little bit more. Let's look at the growth of the free cash flow per share. Have the shares outstanding been reducing over time? What is that growth of that free cash flow per share relative to the free cash flow to price valuation? Okay, we've seen this business grow their free cash flow per share about 20% per year. Fantastic. That's really great. Why? Is it through pure free cash flow growth or is it through buybacks? Furthermore, what is their price to free cash flow ratio? Oh, actually, it's only 15 times. Well, there's an attractive company to buy there. Therefore, I'm interested and I'm going to be purchasing this stock. I do think it's incredibly difficult to quantify evaluation. I've been stuck on this for the last few months. I've been going, how do I identify an appropriate price target? There's people online that are like, boom, this is going to two pound a share. Disney is going to a thousand dollars per share. Tesla to one million right? You've got these people that are going, yes, it'll do this, it'll do this, it'll do this. Well, they're discounted cash flow valuations and all of these other complex arithmetic calculations that don't really achieve that much. Now, it's great. You can run a discounted cash flow model and you can go, okay, this is where I expect roughly for the cash flows to be. Okay, it's good for understanding and forecasting the future of a business. However, it doesn't really help with valuation. There's so many factors that can come into play that can really ruin that strategy that said i do think there is more that can be done i do i don't know if price targets can be achieved but certainly more can be implemented to find a good valuation at the moment i'm currently building 10 rules 10 rules that I believe are incredibly important in identifying a good quality stock. Once you identify these 10 rules, I would hope that that would be enough for an investment strategy, but this is something I'm gonna be building up over a very long period of time. I wanna absolutely master these 10 rules, package them, and then go, okay, look, has this company got this? Yes, it has, fantastic, I'll be buying some of that. Regardless, I went on a bit on a whim about valuation there. So how has my portfolio performed? Honestly, you should have a guess now in the comments. All of the haters just going to be like, look, you've got no money left. You're just lying. It's a paper portfolio. It actually went bankrupt two months ago. This is why, I don't know. It'd be funny if I was just sat outside by a bin with a camera. That would be a brilliant time for that. My portfolio has done, no drum roll, please. Maybe a, a sad trombone. It's down about 59% year to date. Actually, let's pour around. It's down 60% year to date, which means I have, um, I've done very well definitely outperform the markets in some way shape or form here i mean look at the s p 500 down 20 percent. fantastic performance by me no i've done awful and my annualized performance so far in the 999 days that i've been investing is 19.45 percent, but it's negative so it's not great at the moment but that's fine and you might be going well that's fine that's denial you don't realize the losses you've got and that's something that i'm going to be embracing i'm going to be going okay look i'm down twenty thousand pounds that's a starting salary for someone that's a year's starting salary for someone in the uk that's a high number how do i really embrace that loss 
How do I move forward? How do I adapt my strategy going forward? And re realistically, I'm down 53% overall. I think I know the mistakes I've made so far. I'm still making mistakes very likely. I'm not aware of them yet. But knowing, okay, look, I bought too much of Boohoo. I didn't average down properly, which I guess is another one of my mistakes here, where I bought even though the fundamentals were deteriorating slightly. Whereas I think in hindsight, if a company has dropped in share price, it's worthwhile holding off for a period of time and going, okay, look, Boohoo is down 50%. Let's wait until the trend improves. Let's wait until the company releases a better statement. I'll keep holding because it hasn't gone completely downhill. And I do think they've got good long-term growth. I'll keep holding and perhaps they'll make, a let's say, results where they are optimistic. And hey, look, they've returned to profitability. Shares have jumped 20%. That's fine. I'll then look to buy in after that. It really crack down on my average. Rather than just gambling on the way down and just going, I'm just going to keep putting money into the stock and hope that it eventually goes back up because that is just watering the weeds and, you know, ripping out the flowers. What's the point of it? You're not going to do very well from it. And when we look at the UK stock challenge, which is a challenge over 2022 in, in which investors had to pick five stocks that they believe were going to outperform the markets, we can see that not everyone has done particularly well. Only 10% of the entrants are in profit, which is above the FTSE 100 just. 53 people have done well. The rest of the 450 odd have not done well. In fact, Monkey with a Pin, which is an entry of stocks chosen at random, has done better than the FTSE 250 and subsequently definitely me. I became middle of the board there and if we talk about my actual year-to-date performance of my portfolio, I'm down about 60%. Again, that could be due to obviously dollar cost averaging and that changes it a bit, but still, right? That is a really hard feat to achieve. So how do we know that going forward we can outperform the markets? How do I achieve that? And truthfully, I don't know, but I'm gonna keep developing this strategy and look to make improvements over time. And if I can improve my strategy by a small amount over time, I hope over the longer period of time, let's say five years time, that this will be a better strategy and capable of delivering a handsome return. So what do I think is gonna happen in the next year? Truthfully, I have no idea. It could go up, it could go down. I don't really care. I really don't care. When we talk about my specific portfolio performance, what do I think is going to happen to Boohoo? I think it's going to be relatively stagnant. It's going to be volatile, but it's going to remain at around about the same level. Games Workshop, it might see a minor increase in line with the markets. Uh, what do I think about the overall markets, the FTSE 100, the FTSE 250? Again, I'm just guessing really because it's a 12-month period. I don't really know. I'm going to say more optimistic than not. I don't think the market's going to be on a, a downturn for the next year. I hope they are. I don't think they will be. We've also got to look at the overall economy. How well does that factor into the stock market? The stock market is forward thinking. However, the economy is showing signs it's going to be leading into a recession here. The labor market is okay at the moment, but once that collapses, that could be a bad thing indeed, especially for things like retailer stocks that I've got. So how will that affect things? Truthfully, as I say, I plan to just remain employed, keep building up that money and invest for the longer term. And that's all, all what I'm going to do. And going forward in the next uh, year, I'm going to plan to invest and diversify to another another two stocks, hold five companies in the portfolio. And I think that would be a very good short-term goal. Five quality companies that are well diversified. At the moment, we've got the likes of Games Workshop and Boohoo, two retailers taking up a majority of the portfolio. Let's balance this out by getting that financial company of the London Stock Exchange Group in there. Let's add two more for diversification purposes that really add and broaden the risk and really help out in the portfolio for the longer term. Have a fantastic year.